Dan Randolph and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is my after match reaction from the game between Republic of Ireland, Nil and Northern Ireland. Nil. Um, another horrific performance. Uh, another uh, another performance that lacked any sort of identity. We didn't show any sort of plan. Starting off with the lineup, a strange lineup again. He starts with, you know, surely the whole idea of these friendlies is to warm up to the competitive game. So why not go with the team that you're probably going to go with against Denmark instead of going with Daryl Lenehan, who's not going to get a sniff against the Danes. John Egan's probably not going to get a run. Arguably, should do. Didn't think he had a bad game tonight, to be fair, but the likelihood is he'll go back to Kevin Long and Richard Kyo. Um, I don't see it changing. Then, James McLean left wing back again. What's the point? What is the point? He's not going to play against Denmark. He's suspended for the game. It was just a token cap. Here you go. Play against the North. We know you want to. You know it's all about the rivalry. Okay, I get that. But what's like what? What is the act, actual point of this? This this is supposed to be to gear up towards a game that's competitive on Monday. And Ender Stevens is more than likely. I'd be highly shocked if he doesn't start. Um, he's naturally a left wing back. It's his position. He plays there week in, week out for Sheffield United. He plays there alongside John Egan, who would have been beside him tonight. What an ideal time to throw him in, see how he does, let him start the game, let him get a feel for the for the team, let him go out there and have a go. Because when he came on, he done quite well. But for some reason... James McLean gets picked in favour of him. My mind boggles. I just, I don't understand. Um, nothing against McLean. Again, love his passion and everything like that. But he's not a left wing back. Anyone who watched the game, so I can clearly see he's not a left wing back. He's a left midfielder. And that's that. And if we're playing 4-4-2, he should be there. But when we're playing this new system, he shouldn't be anywhere near that starting eleven, in my opinion. Um, moving into midfield, Glenn Whelan, you know, Glenn Whelan's Glenn Whelan, you know what you're going to get from him, he only played, I don't know, it was, a, it was a token cap to wish him well, I wish him well, I wish him all the best, I thought he was a great servant, actually I've not, I, I, I have nothing but, you know, good things to say about him, fair play for everything you've done for, for our country, and you know, you deserve the send off that you got tonight, so fair play to you. It's probably the only kind of positive from the night, other than Darren Randolph and goal, who saved us dramatically, tw uh, at least at least twice. But it could have been three 0 without him. But uh, uh, Robbie Brady, despite what people were saying online, I thought he had a, he had a decent game. For me, he, he looks a level above any sort of player that we have, and he's the only player who looks like he wants to create any sort of chances. Callum O'Dowd had a poor game by his standards, still. Don't think the manager is doing him any favours by the position he's putting him in. Again, Robbie Brady is not a number ten, and neither is Callum O'Dowd. He might wear a number ten, but he's that's not his natural position. His natural position is out wide. So instead of trying to accommodate James McLean, why not trying to accommodate Robbie Brady and maybe play him left wing back? Oh, I'm just getting so sick and tired of it. We just constantly allow this to happen. We don't create any chances. Callum Robinson looked lively, but again, no, he got no none of the ball. Seamus Coleman didn't have his best game in an Ireland jersey. I think he'd even admit that himself. I like. I should struggle to find any positives to take out of any of these international breaks. You look from a year ago today, we got beat by Denmark five one, and the management should have walked away then. I don't understand how he's still in in his job. He went and flirted with other. Clubs, Stoke City mainly, and a lot of people have come out from players to journalists to everybody came out and said that like that for them should have been 
the time for them to go because what are they doing? Like what? Like oh okay, I'll I'll just take the Ireland job. And no one seemed to bat, none, none of the fans seemed to bat an eyelid about it. The only one who complained about it were us. Why were they given a contract before they even got to the World Cup? Before the play, playoffs were even played, they were, they were given a new contract. And ever since they were given that new contract, they've won one game. And that was against the USA. Last minute, Alan Judge goal. One game in a year. Who is supposed to be analysing this perf- uh, their performances from the management right down to the players? Who's supposed who's supposed to be analysing this? Surely, if results aren't going your way, you do something about it. And for me, and I've been saying this for a long, long time, change is needed, and change is needed fast. It's been three games, and have we looked like scoring? No. We're probably going to get smashed by Denmark on Monday. I struggle to see any sort of way we can get a result unless it's a nil all draw again. But I mean, I'm looking around that squad, there's, there's Premier League players in it. And you look at Northern Ireland, I credit to them, they came to, they came to the Viva and they made a show of us. You know, Darren Randolph was fantastic tonight. People give Dan Randolph an awful hard time. But if it wasn't for him tonight, we would have lost that game. And we would have lost that game convincingly. So, you know, he rightly won man of the match. But what does that say about our team? And what does that say about the manager and his tactics and his negativity? You can't go and play for Everton on a Sunday and have a fantastic game as captain and then turn around on a Thursday and look like a bad player. Seamus Coleman is not a bad player. Seamus Coleman is probably our best player. But you look what happened with Matt Doherty when he was put into the same position. In the form of his life, brought into the team and he looked like not even an average player because of the system we play. He's playing a five at the back with, with wing-backs, but the wing-backs hardly ever get forward. They just sit on the halfway line because we don't get the ball up. We let teams play. We don't do much in the midfield. Again, I was talking about players who are who are supposed to be good and supposed to be bad. Jeff Hendrick is, is, is brilliant for Burnley. Robbie Brady is Robbie Brady. We all know the quality Robbie Brady has, even in his deliveries alone. You can see that this evening we were missing, we were really missing him. And I think, you know, on another day, Shane Duffy gets on the end of some of them and they go in, and we we'd be here celebrating. But the the fact of the matter is this. You know, there was such a big deal made about this Michael Obafemi kid and he didn't even come on. And O'Neill's coming out and saying, well, he, he he hasn't spoken to him yet. He doesn't know if he wants to declare. Why are you calling him up then? Why why on earth are you calling him up? It just makes zero sense. And if there was ever a game to bring him on to do well in tonight against Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland are nowhere near the quality of Denmark. You know what I mean? It's just... My mind boggles as to where we are going as a nation and the fact that people are accepting this. I was talking to some people after the game and they were like, well, the change of management isn't needed. Well, I'm sorry, but in any in all shapes of life, if someone isn't happy in their job, they move their job to somewhere where they feel like they'd be treated better by a manager or the manager might speak to them in a, better, in a different tone than the, than the current manager. And people might recipient better to a new voice, even. I just don't think that. I'm just I'm, I'm running out of words here because I'm just I'm irate and it's just becoming a laughing stock. Every time there's a international break, there's some new saga about some new player who doesn't want to play for us, but we're begging him to play. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care. It's just it's it's getting beyond um, a farce now. It's literally becoming a laughing stock, and nobody seems to want to do anything about it. Um, O'Neill seems to think he can he can he can do whatever he wants, and he can still keep his job. I think it's a case where they they just can't afford to get rid of him. So it's going to be a case of he needs to go. I think if anything, these empty uh, these stadiums that are half empty speaks volumes of 
change and the booze at the full time. I think that their time is all about up in order of and a very, 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 very average side average Northern Ireland side come to Dublin and play us off the park. And yes, people say we don't have the players, but yeah, you look at their team and their manager who came from the League of Ireland. And they came to Dublin and, and they gave us, well, I wouldn't say a football lesson, but they pressed us, they they, they frightened the life out of somewhere and defended us, Dar- Daryl Lennon, most notably. But, you know, this is probably the longest rant I've, I've been on, but it's been needed. And, you know, I'm not going to continue any further because I just I'm just I'm shattered and I'm broken it's been a long day and even a longer night watching that and we just we look no closer to scoring felt sorry for Sean McGuire and I hope he gets well soon but uh, oh and Ro- I thought Ronan Curtis did alright when he came on he, he was clutching at straws he didn't have much to go with but you know the kid made use of what he could and Tried to get on the ball. Tried to make things happen. But. You know. You can only you can only do so much. Look. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Am I being too harsh? Am I right? Am I wrong? Lay it all on me. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. For more content, content like this. Don't forget to. Uh, share this video. With your friends. Don't forget to check out our playlist. With all the fan camps after the game, we interviewed a fair few fans. So you might be in it. Your friend might be in it. Who knows? But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And thanks for watching. Good night.